Hi, I'm Alexander Vlad, and I'm here to show you how to speed up your photography workflow using Aftershot Pro. I'm going to start by giving you a quick tour of the Aftershot Pro interface. Finding and viewing your photos in Aftershot Pro. On the left is the Browse panel. What's great about Aftershot, unlike other photo workflow software, is that you can choose to work directly from your file structure instead of having to import everything into a catalog. Your choice depends on how you like to organize and search through your photos. For now, let's keep it simple and work directly from the file system. To access your photos, click the File System tab, and in the directory view, navigate to the folder on the system where your photos are stored. Aftershot remembers the folder it was last in, so you don't have to navigate to the folder each time you start the application. You can also right-click a folder in the File System view to make it a favorite, and it will be placed as a bookmark at the top of the directory view panel, saving you time and mouse clicks. Now you can see at the bottom of your screen, the thumbnail panel is displaying your film roll, comprised of photos from the My Pictures folder. Click on the photo you want to work on to bring it up in the preview panel in the middle of the screen. Here's the photo I'm choosing. It seems to be in the wrong orientation. To adjust your image orientation, use the rotate buttons. There we go. At the top left of your screen, you can change the orientation of the thumbnail view by toggling between thumbnail view, standard view, and image view. Image view might be handy when you want more space for editing a single image, whereas thumbnail view is great when you want to view a number of thumbnails at once. In thumbnail view, you can use the thumbnail slider to increase the viewing size of your photos or decrease, bringing more photos into view at once. You'll find the same slider on the right of your film roll in standard view. Within the preview image area, you can zoom in or zoom out of your selected image from 18 to 800% and then you can use the one-to-one -one zoom button to return it to actual size and use the toggle fit button to fit the image within the preview panel. In this section, we're going to show you how to organize your photos using Aftershot Pro. The top button bar in Aftershot has a number of tools to make browsing more efficient with tagging and filtering options. The simplest options are pick and reject, which are a good way to do a first rough selection of images. You can also use ratings and color labels to organize your images. Rate your images from 0 to 5 stars, so you can sort them later based on the number of stars you have assigned to them. Your film roll will show the star rating on the top right of the thumbnails, and your pick or reject flags on the left. Color labels can be used to mark various stages in your workflow. For example, green can mark perfect finished images, and red can mark images in need of post-processing. Another handy tool to help you keep track of your photos. Note that star ratings, color labels, and flags can be assigned to an image on the thumbnail preview as well by hovering over the top of the thumb. The Sort Ascending or Descending button will sort your photos by star rating, or you can use the Filter button to sort by rating, label, or flag. The options in the Filter dialog box can be combined, so you can filter on red labeled, accepted, and four star images, for instance. You can also add text to the metadata of your photos in Aftershot. It's another way that you can quickly find your photos later. On the right hand of your screen, you'll find the Meta tab. In here, you can enter terms separated by a comma that describe your image. The more keywords you assign, the easier will be the search for your image. You can see all the metadata attached to your photo within the Metadata browser, and this can be found within the Library tab. Here we can see the terms we just added, plus our star rating, color label, and the flag we assigned prior. You also find all the photo info that your camera captures. This is also known as EXIF data. It includes everything from the make and model of your camera and the lens to your focal length, your aperture, your shutter speed, if whether you're flash fired or not, and any intrinsic copyright information you included in your camera body. Also in the library tab, you have the catalogs. They make it easy to organize your photos stored in several different folders or drives into a single virtual folder or catalog right with an aftershot. In the next section, we're gonna go through basic training for photo editing in Aftershot Pro. Now that you've sorted your images, it's time to edit. The image editing tools reside in the right panel. The tools are arranged in logical tabs and you can pin each tool to the top, enabling you to keep your favorite tools within reach at all times. The tabs can also be reordered according to your workflow preference by clicking and dragging up or down. The most fundamental tools can also be accessed quickly within the image preview area. These are pan, click white, crop, straighten, red eye, and layers. Let's quickly crop our photo. So here's crop, I'll open that up, we'll enable it, and then I can just drag from the edges to tighten that image up a bit. There we go. Now let's jump into the basic adjustment tab where you'll find most of the tools that you typically need. 
I'm just quickly going to use the white click tool to adjust the overall color of the image as white balance is the basis for everything else. So click on something that looks pretty white or it should be white and it will adjust the image accordingly. And then let's increase the exposure of the photo slightly as it's a bit underexposed. Now I'm going to make this image black and white but I'm going to use the mouse wheel to control the slider instead of dragging it. It's another handy way to do the same thing. Next, let's adjust the sharpening by clicking on either side of the slider to increase or decrease the values by 10. There we go, we can increase a few clicks, and if we want to bring it back down, we can decrease. As you can see, there are a few different ways that you can work the sliders to achieve the same effect. You can also input the value in the box to the right of the photo if you know the exact value for the specific adjustment you want to apply. If you want to reset a particular slider, you can double click on the slider name or alternatively on the slider button and it will go back to its original value. Or if you are unhappy with the adjustments you have applied, the reset all button will reset all adjustments returning your photo to the original state. You can also use auto level to quickly and easily auto correct the exposure of this image. Or there's also perfectly clear which auto adjusts the exposure, white balance, and contrast levels of the photo in just one click. If it doesn't create all the adjustments you're looking for, it can be a good starting point for fine-tuning your photo. Down at the bottom of the standard tab, we have presets. Click on the drop-down menu to apply a predefined preset to your image, such as black and white simple. Or you can create your own preset by clicking on the plus sign. Every combination of settings of any tool can be stored as a preset, which can later be recalled just by clicking on the preset name. You can apply presets to one or many photos at a time. I'm going to apply the sepia light preset to three of my images by selecting them in the thumbnail panel and finding sepia light in the drop down preset menu. And done. And if I don't like the preset on two out of three of the images, for example, I can select two images at once and click reset all. In this section, we're going to talk about selective editing with Aftershot Pro. Layers allow you to create isolated adjustments or edits to a specified area of a photo. I want to change the hue of only the background, so I'm going to add an adjustment layer by clicking Adjust, and then by using the curve cursor to define an area by creating a region. I'm just clicking on points around the shape I want to isolate, and now I'm double clicking on my starting point to choose the region. Next, I'm going to navigate to the Color tab and move Play with the curves to show you the change I am making only to the region I selected. Adjusting the feather slider will soften a hard edge between the region and the rest of the image. In addition to the regular adjustment layers, you can use the heel clone layer to clone parts of an image or stamp out imperfections such as blemishes or sensor dust specks. In this section we're going to talk about batch editing and batch output with Aftershot Pro. Now, if you want to go back in time to a particular edit or series of edits, you can use undo or control Z, command Z, but the history function is much quicker and easier when you've got more than a couple of steps to go back. You can find the history tool in the view menu. It shows every adjustment made to the photo from its original state, and clicking on one of the adjustments in history will take you back to a point in time where the particular edit was applied. If you wanted to do some side-by-side -side comparison of your now photo and then photo, simply right-click on the image thumbnail and select version, new version from current. Now you'll see you have two images, one from that point in history and one from the current one. If you wanted to copy the history of a particular image and apply all the same adjustments to another image or set of images, simply go to edit, copy image settings, or click on the image thumbnail and do control C. Select the images you want to apply the image settings to in your film roll and either edit, paste image settings, or you can use the keyboard command for paste, control, or command V. Finally, we're ready to output all of our black and white images that we've worked on. But first, I've just got to activate the multi-image view to compare my photos side by side in the preview panel by selecting all of the thumbnails with the keyboard command, control, or command A, and then by clicking on the multi-image view tool on the bottom right hand corner of the application. I'm happy with them, so I'm going to go to my output tab and click JPEG full to batch export my files as full size JPEGs. I'm saving it to a folder titled JPEG full size. Now, if I navigate back to my file system tab and locate my JPEG full size folder, I can see all my images that I've exported. By clicking reset all, 
on the thumbs within this folder, I can no longer restore the photo back to original. However, if I jump to my original pictures folder, non-destructive editing allows me to reset all and my original photo is restored. If you have quite specific output requirements, you can define new batch output settings by right-clicking in the batch output tray and clicking New. If you have a photo you want to do some further editing work on, like my Romanian accordionist for example, there's plenty more tools to explore with an aftershot. But you can also bring your current photo into an external editor, like PaintShop Pro for example, and you can do that all from within aftershot. Just click on the Edit with External Editor button, choose your editor, and away you go. You're done. The whole point of workflow is to spend less time at the computer and more time with the camera in your hands. I'm Alexander Vlad. To learn more about Aftershot's powerful image editing and organizational tools, visit Corel.com. That just about concludes getting started in Aftershot Pro for a faster photography workflow. Don't you have photos to edit?